Hi, this is Pastor Bob Yandy, and welcome back to Student of the Word. We are in Romans chapter 8 today, and we're going to talk about the fact that God can cause all things to work together for good in our life. Not all things are good. There's good things and bad things to come into our life, but God can take them, work them all together, and come out with a blessing on the other side. Boy, does that insult the devil. Let's insult the devil together. Let's go to the Word of God. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and study the Word of God with Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome again to Student of the Word. This is Pastor Bob Yandian. So glad to have you here. We are in the midst of Romans chapter 8. We're teaching it verse by verse. We've been, I don't know, seven, eight lessons now. Something like that. I can't count. But anyway, to let you know that we're going through this entire chapter verse by verse. And listen, this is the best way to grow in the things of God. The book I'm offering is my book on the book of Romans. And this is verse by verse going through the whole book. I didn't write the book of Romans. The Holy Spirit did through Paul. This is just Bob's taking of it, applying it to today, helping you to understand it today. And again, the word of God lives and abides forever. So I'm not trying to add to God's word. I'm just simply trying to be here and in my gift, explain it to where you'll understand it, bring it down to a level where anybody can understand it. We began talking about in chapter eight, the importance of walking in the spirit and the renewing of the mind. This is the growth of the Christian life. The growth of the Christian life spreads out in so many different areas. In other words, you're born again and hallelujah, before God, you are saved. But God wants the world to know you're saved. And this is where after being saved and the Holy Spirit moving inside of your spirit, the word needs to start recreating your thoughts to where you no longer think the thoughts of Bob for 30 some odd years or 50 years or however long it was before you were saved. If you, Bill, or you, James, were saved, you know, when you were 40 years old, well, you have 40 years of undoing after you get saved to start thinking like God does and get rid of the mind of George or Linda or Bill or whoever you are and start having the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is the word of God. Thinking like Jesus thinks demands that we renew our thinking in line with the word of God. And this is how we progressively day by day become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and visibly show the world out there what we have in here, that we take our salvation and we work it out into the world where people can see it with fear and trembling. So we've now come to this part where we're talking about the two that help us get this accomplished is the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. The Word of God gives us the promises of God, but the Holy Spirit gives us the power to live it day by day. And we found out something too in the verses before this. In verses 26, now into verse 27, there's also times after we've studied the word of God and know it, we still run across occasions we don't know even how to put a prayer together. Something crosses our path, which was unexplained. We don't know who started the rumors. We don't know how far this thing has spread to where people are talking about us, saying things about us that aren't true, uh, our family, whatever. And we don't know how to defend ourselves. And we wonder, how how come I didn't see this coming? And I can't think of a scripture because I I don't know exactly where it began. And I don't know what scripture to stand on. The Holy Spirit says, that's me. I can help in that. And we talked about last time, the power of praying in the spirit. When we know not what we should pray for as we ought, the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings. And this is, we literally don't even know how to articulate a prayer. And we suddenly start putting a prayer together, but it comes out in this power of the spirit and we begin to pray in tongues. And the very first mention of praying in tongues is found in the Old Testament, Isaiah 28. With stammering lips and another tongue will he, God, speak to this people. And as I pray in the spirit, God can begin to show me things and the power of the word and the power of the spirit working together. Now we come to verse 27. We find out this is God's plan for us is that, In verse 27 here of Romans chapter eight, it says, now he, that is the father who searches the hearts, knows what is the mind or the thinking of the spirit because he, the Holy Spirit, makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. As I begin to pray in the spirit, the Holy Spirit can take that and the father and the Holy Spirit understand what I'm going through and begin to give back to me information and wisdom on how to stand in the midst of this and even direction from God as to what I should be doing That's the power of the Holy Spirit. In other words, when we can't get by on just one, which is the word of God, the Holy Spirit comes.
comes to fill in the gaps the two put together. And it's simply saying, you can't lose with the stuff I use. I use the power of praying in the spirit. I use the power also of the word of God. And as we begin to grow in front of the world now, even the world knows that, you know, if they thought they threw something across my path that I couldn't get around, they're going to find out they have another thing coming because they didn't try to throw something in front of me. They tried to throw it in something in front of God. And listen, you don't fool God. And just like with Jesus came out every single time when people boxed him into a corner and thought they had him trapped, he came out of it every single time. He didn't do anything we can't do. He had the same Bible we have. In fact, we have more of the Bible than he did. And we have the same Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit always knows the plan of God and the thinking of Jesus Christ, and then can transfer that wisdom to our heart since he lives there. This comes to our heart by praying in the Holy Spirit, by praying in tongues. Our sensitivity to the Holy Spirit increases as we pray in tongues and we can hear the Spirit's voice and leading, then pray in line with God's will. Why did we pray in the first place in tongues? It's because the word of God says we know not what we should pray for as we ought. The more we grow in the Lord, the more the word of God we have, we usually know what to pray. But there still comes times in our life we're taken totally by surprise, blindsided by the power of Satan and the works of demons and the, the lust of the world around us. We're thrown into a situation we don't know what to do. And the Bible says, just start praying in the spirit because there's nothing, listen, it might've taken us by surprise, but nothing takes God by surprise. Nothing takes the Holy Spirit by surprise. You think you fall into a situation and God goes, oops, I didn't know that. Did you know that Jesus? Or do you have a plan? I have none. Let's ask the Holy Spirit. He says, don't ask me. You guys come up with all this stuff. I just deliver it. So at that time, no, there's nothing that can cross our path that ever shocks God, surprises him, or he doesn't have an answer for it or has to go and suddenly look up an answer. No, he knows everything that's going to happen to us. And before it even happens, has a plan of escape. And then we come to verse 28. In fact, one of the most incredible verses of scripture that tells us when we have the power of the word working in our life as Christians and the power of the Holy Spirit that works together, God simply says, you put those two together in your life and there's nothing that can happen to you that I can't make something even better out of. The good things happen to you. I've got better things to come. The bad things that come to you, I can even take those and work with those and turn everything around in your life for divine good. The power of the Holy Spirit working in you. And that's why we come to verse 28 and we know You might as well underline those three things. There are certain things you don't know, but this you do know. All things work together for good. They assist each other. The good things and the bad things get together and assist each other. And it always turns around for my good. And the Greek word here is agathos, divine good, eternal good. This is not the word kalos, which is normal good around us, like a a good piece of cake or a a, a good cart. No, this is good of divine good that eternal affects us eternally. This is agathos, divine and eternal good. It says all things work together together for good to those who love God. In the midst of all this, I haven't thrown my love for God away to those that love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. I want you to notice what this verse is saying. Again, we know that all things work together for good. This verse does not say all things are good. You'd have to be dumb to think of that. Everything that happens in life, oh, this is good, this is good. God doesn't see everything as good. He sees that it can work together for good for the person who has a love for God, love for the word of God, and has the love for praying in the spirit, knowing I have times I can pray and know what to pray other times. I don't even know where to begin in my prayers. I know if I know what to pray, it comes from the word of God. But when I'm blindsided, I can turn to the Holy Spirit, and everything's going to turn out for my good. The good things thrown at me and the bad things. The good things, like, you know, it's a blessing today and and a blessing comes my way. I can praise God for it. No, because what I can remember when I prayed for it and now I see it come to pass. But there's also those things that happen in life. We don't know where in the world it came from. We don't know what person started. We don't know which demon started. We know Satan probably was the the central core of all of this. We're living in a world that's fallen all around us. And God is simply saying that all things that come at us, good things and bad things, can work together and God can bring divine good 
out of it. When I was real young, my mom made a chocolate cake that was incredible. Don't tell me your mom makes the best chocolate cake or grandma makes the best chocolate. My mother made the best chocolate cake. You may not believe me, but wait till we get to heaven. God's going to tell you Bob's mother made the best chocolate cake ever. So anyway, I was real young, five, six years old. My mom was baking a chocolate cake and she had up there and I was just watching her. And so I, I reached up on the counter and I, you know, she'd spilt some stuff there, you know, some, some flour and some things like that. So I reached up and tasted and I thought, Ew, that doesn't taste very good. That's flour. Touch this over here. A little bit of salt goes, Ew, I didn't know that. Baking powder, it doesn't taste very good. Raw chocolate. You think raw chocolate? No, no. Chocolate tastes good, but not raw chocolate. I tried. And my whole thing was, how do you take all that and make a cake out of it? I don't understand that. But my mom would take it, you know, blend it all together, stick it in the oven and come out with a chocolate cake. That's the way my faith works. I trust a God who can take everything, the good situations and the bad situations, stir them all together, stick it in the oven and come out with a chocolate cake every time. Why? To those that love God and to those that are the called according to his purpose. Not for every Christian, but I serve a God that's working with me, a Holy Spirit that's working with me, angels that work with me, promises that work with me, the power of the Holy Spirit working with me. I know this, that God is back there behind the scenes and I may not be able to see it with my own eyes, but I have a hope in me. I'm gonna come through this thing. And says again, we know that all things work together for good to those that love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Ask yourself a question. Do I know that? It says you do. Well, have you ever thought about that? No, because usually we fall apart whenever problems come along and we start crying out, God, I didn't know this. What are you doing to me? And God said, I'm not doing this to you. Your temptations and trials come from three sources, the world, the flesh, and the devil. I'm not sending evil across your path, but I saw it coming. I know I already have a plan for you. Just stand still and watch the deliverance of the Lord. Understand this. Can you think of a scripture to stand on the midst of all this? Yes. But what if the answer is, no, I don't know where to begin. God says you have the Holy Spirit. Why don't you start praying in tongues? And the Holy Spirit can begin to show you my plan and show you what I have planned for you and what's gonna bring you through. He's gonna show you my thoughts and make them your thoughts. And the moment you see that and you start praying in tongues, here's what's going to happen. You're going to begin to understand the mind of Christ, my mind. And you're gonna understand that long before this problem came along, I saw it coming. And before it ever came along, I already made a way of escape before the problem ever came along. In life, we're faced with the world system backed by Satan himself. We will not escape the problems in this world, but we do have victory in the midst of them. We face the same trials the unbeliever faces because we're still in a physical body and we have the nature of the flesh and we live in the same world that the world does. We live in the same world system that the unbelievers live in. But you know what? I've been saved out of the world system. I'm in God's system, but I'm still stuck in this system around me. And I have a different system. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Sin as the unbeliever has. Just like sin I have is the nature of the flesh. They have it too, but I've been redeemed on the inside of me and can shout out greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. God has plans to bless me in spite of Satan's world or bless all of us by even using Satan's world system. God can take our attacks and turn them for our good if we'll just put our trust in him and trust in his word and trust in the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. All this is incredible. You can have this same book right here where this is beginning and presented and the announcers can tell you how you can have a copy of it. I'll see you right after we come back from halftime, right back from the break. Romans New Testament Commentary is a verse-by-verse -verse teaching of the Book of Romans from the personal study notes of Pastor Bob Yandian. In his letter to the Romans, Paul clarified the principle of justification and whether it is by deeds of the law or by the work of God. Paul reveals that the law has never been a means of salvation and that faith has always been the means of spirituality regardless of the dispensation. This epistle also helps us to understand how we may gain victory over the flesh. If we as believers walk according to our new nature, the inward man, we are controlled by the Holy Spirit and not the sin nature. To order Romans New Testament Commentary, visit our website at bobbyendian.com. Theology Simplified is a practical guide to foundational biblical truth. Basic doctrines are not difficult, but easy to understand. They often become disguised as complicated or deep-sounding words, 
but the definitions are simple. Pastor Bob makes complex theological concepts clear and practical. Eight crucial doctrines of the Christian faith are demystified. Redemption, justification, sanctification, reconciliation, predestination, election, propitiation, and glorification. These eight precepts, essential for all believers to understand, come to light as you read and arrive at a deeper understanding of the finished work of Jesus Christ. To order Theology Simplified, visit our website at bobyandian.com. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership. Thanks for coming back. We are in Romans chapter 8. We're in verse 28, one of my favorite verses in the entire Word of God. While you go back to that verse of Scripture, let me just say again for those watching that are partners with me, God, I love you guys. You guys are great. I mean, honestly, I couldn't get it done without you. Say, well, you have God. That's true. But God supplies through you. God supplies His grace from heaven. He supplies His Holy Spirit from heaven. He supplies His Word from heaven. But the things around us, the natural things to help us get this gospel out there and get this Word out there comes through people. And that includes finances. And that includes human effort. I got workers around me. They've been hired to help me here because I can't do all these things. My employees around help me. But you know what? Even though you're not an employee, you're a partner, if you should, first of all, partner with me in your heart. Partnership doesn't start by giving money. In fact, a lot of times we give money just to get rid of a pest. A pastor pushes and pushes and pushes. We say, okay, 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 I'll give him the offering. Just shut up. But there's also those that we identify with and say, you know what? I like this. This, this, this bears witness with me. And I've had that happen before. People said, I became a partner with you because I listened to you. I thought that's exactly what I've been looking for. I think that way too, but I just didn't see the answers to things. Thank you, Pastor Bob, for doing what you do. And I want to become a partner with you. Partnership begins in the heart. Then actions jump right in there with it. And so if you'd like to become a partner with me, perhaps this is your first broadcast. Hang in there, listen to a few more of those. Perhaps you've heard 10, 15, or 20 broadcasts. Thank you for sticking around. But maybe now's the time to start thinking about being a partner with me. In fact, I personally believe the Holy Spirit's already been tapping some of you on the shoulder saying, you need to join him as a partner. You keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. Why do you keep putting it off? If God's telling you to do this, he's got blessings attached to it. So, and the greatest blessing we're going to have is changed lives. Listen, I don't see every changed lives. I get letters, I get emails, I get texts, I get things like that from people who tell me how much this broadcast has blessed them. But you know what? I don't know you. I don't see you face to face. In fact, I wouldn't know you if you stood in front of me because I don't know your face, but I will know you in heaven. And you and I together in heaven are going to see people walk up and say, thank you, Pastor Bob, the broadcast that you gave every single day you know, student of the word, it so blessed me and turned me around. I became a disciple for the Lord. And I'm up in heaven. Look at all the rewards I'm getting. And the rewards I'm getting came from your teaching of the word of God. Others will be in heaven saying, I got saved because of your broadcast. Your broadcast brought me salvation and I received Jesus. I'm here today because of your broadcast. Others will tell me I'm rewarded here today because of your broadcast. And what we're doing here is, is we're working together to see people saved and then become disciples. Salvation takes you to heaven. Discipleship gives you rewards once you get there, but discipleship is spreading the gospel. A convert gets to go to heaven, but disciples take others with them. This is what God is looking for. So I'm simply asking you, would you become a partner with me? Yield to the Holy Spirit, especially those who have heard from the Holy Spirit, or others just make up your own mind as you purpose in your own heart. Become a giver and decide you want to become a partner with me. Go to bobbyandian.com. You'll find a place there where you can become a partner. Verse 28 doesn't say all things are good. Although some things we face are good, but every day we have a certain amount of good and bad that come into our life. But our daily lives are not determined by our circumstances. We must rely on the word of God in us. Everything in life has its place, even suffering. God doesn't create suffering. 
but is made as part of his plan, a way that we're going to get through it and come out on the other side. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. And God doesn't come up with a plan when the suffering comes along. He doesn't come up with a plan when the persecutions come along. He had a plan long before the earth began because in his omniscience, he saw everything that was going to come to pass, including the stuff you're going through right now. This financial mess, this family mess, this suffering of, of sickness, you're going through. God saw it coming and has a plan to bring you through it or to heal you or to bring finances into your life. You just don't know how, but that's where faith comes in. I'm going to put my full trust in God. Even though God doesn't send suffering, Satan and this fallen world do. Suffering helps us to understand where we stand in life. God doesn't look at suffering so he'll know where we are. Suffering is there so we'll know where we are. God knows where we are. He knows everything. But I need to know from time to time exactly how much I'm advanced. Either I don't understand how far I've advanced or I'm stupid on the other side. And I think of further down the road than I am. But when I run into a situation, it helps me wake up. This is where I am. Suffering helps us to understand where we stand in life. Sufferings put us under pressure, but it also helps to reveal what's in us. God gives us the weapons to handle the problems, which are always superior to Satan's temptations and traps. So it's not the trials that make us stronger. It's not the tests we go through that make us stronger. It's not the adversity we go through that makes us stronger, but the faith we use in the trial, that's what strengthens us. If problems made us stronger, every Christian would be strong. But no matter the problem, God has a way of escape planned in all situations, good and bad. All things are going to work together in your life. Understand this. Have all things worked together for good so far? Then why is God going to stop today? It's going to go on today, tomorrow, and all the way till the time of the coming of Jesus Christ to take us into heaven at the rapture of the church or else you die and go directly to heaven. All things work together, cooperate with each other, and then eventually turn around for our good. All ingredients, good, tasting, or bad, will work together and result in a blessing. Only the believer who knows and uses the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit can make all things work together for his good. These are the ones who love God and keep his commandments. John 14, verse 15. Romans 8, 28 describes the believer who qualifies in two areas. First, they are the elect, that's the born again. And second, they love God and are mature. Had a friend in college when I was in college. We went, you know, we all went uh, at, at uh, summer, took off. He was Christian. I was Christian. He went, and and what he said was before he left, he said, I've looked into this summer. I don't have a whole lot to do at home. He said, but I have found out that there's some young people that go on summer break and they go down to uh, Louisiana to the offshore rigs down there and they make a lot of money. They work, work you really, really hard. He says, but boy, do you make money in that thing? So he went down there and spent the summer there and then told me when he got back what happened. Here's a story he told me, and I've never forgot this story. What an incredible story. He said, they, the first thing they put me on was, he said, was repairing pipe. He said, they sent pipe down there, which they put under the water, you know, under the Gulf water out there to where the pumping station was. And he said, this is what they would pump oil through. And he said, and it had to handle a lot of pressure because there's a lot of oil that would come up at a time. He said, and they got the pipe from the manufacturer and it had a rating on there of how much pressure this pipe would stand. But they said, you know what? Some of them lie. Some of these pipes will not handle that kind of pressure. And we need to find out, but we don't have time to send it back. And for them to get us a new one, what we do is we have you look at it and that's your job. And what you do, and they said, we test this with water pressure. So he said, they'd have a big piece of pipe here and they would cap up the ends and pump water pressure into it. And most of them were designed to handle up to 1,800 to 2,000 pounds per square inch of water pressure coming in. That would tell you it would handle that much uh, oil pressure coming into it too. So he said, I did that. I'd pump it. He says, and I'd stand back and watch. He said, I'd run it up to 1,000, 1,200, 1,400, 1,500. He said that pipe would be shaking under the pressure of that water in there. He said, and then oftentimes you do this. He said, and water would be shooting out of a tiny little crack that was in there and just shooting up like that. He said, I'd go over and while it was spewing it out, he said, I'd circle it, back the pressure off, come back. And he said, they taught me how to weld. I would weld it and sand it down. He says, and then do it all over again to where that thing would handle more pressure than they said it would. He said, one day I was doing that. He said, sometimes you'd back, you'd run up and another one would occur. I'd go over and circle that. And he said, in one pipe, he said, I found up to three pressure points that need to be fixed. Here's what he said I thought was so interesting. He said, and he's a Christian. 
He said, I was just thinking about the Lord one day and all this. He said, I was doing all this and not thinking a thing about it. He said, the Lord spoke to me. And here's what he said. The pressure didn't create the crack. The pressure revealed the crack. Think about that. He said, it suddenly struck me. The pressures in my life are not there and create a crack in me, they reveal where I am. That's exactly what problems are. Problems are Satan trying to do things in your life to destroy you, but instead of destroying you, you actually use the problem. You look at that problem and understand and think, it, and if you fall apart, circle that. You know what that means? That means I wasn't as mature as I thought I was. I got a crack in my life. And listen, the pressure revealed it. Thank you, devil. You sent something into my life that revealed something. And you know what? I'm going to take the blowtorch of 1 John 1, 9 and ask the Lord to forgive me of that. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Take a whole new look at it. Go back to the word of God and start all over again in that area. I'm going to grow to where one day you're going to send the same pressure to my life and I ain't going to crack at that time. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18 says this, therefore we do not lose heart, but even though our outward man, this body is perishing, the inward man is renewed every day. For our light affliction, which is only but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. The affliction which comes into my life for a moment works for me. It doesn't say here that Satan sent it to work for you. He said it to destroy you. But God actually says, let's take this thing coming in from Satan, from the world, or from your flesh, and let's work with it and actually cause it to do good in your life. The scripture again says, all things work together for good in my life. All things are things good and things bad. God can take the evil that's in this world that comes against me and says, let's use this. And instead of it destroying you, it's going to become a stepping stone to a great greater height and a greater revelation of Jesus Christ in his life. Verse 17 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things that are seen, but the things which are not seen, the problem coming at me looks like people looks like gossip, looks like backbiting, looks like people behind the scenes trying to destroy. That's what it looks like, but there's something behind it. I see behind it the power of the devil ultimately and demons, but I also see on the other side behind the devil, God back there just molding and shaping all this says, go ahead, devil, try what you want. We're going to take this and actually cause at the end of it, the enemy to turn around and walk over on Bob's side and start fighting with him. Just like in war, we've had times where military men were under great pressure and the enemy coming against him and suddenly realized they were outflanked, they were outpowered and everything else and suddenly realized I may be on the wrong side and they walked over here and started fighting with our own men. This is what can happen in life. The circumstances sent to destroy you will actually turn to work for you. Verse 18, while we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things which are not seen, the things which are seen are your problems. The things which are not seen is God's plan, God's power, God's word, God's Holy Spirit. But I understand this. I'm going to keep my eyes on the unseen. The unseen is the spiritual world in which God is going to take this natural thing and turn it around because the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. My problem is just for the moment, but what it's working out in there with God's power working for me and actually taking this evil thing and causing it to turn around for my good is going to cause something eternal in my life. I don't only have it in this lifetime. I'm going to take it to heaven with me. And once I get to heaven with me, I'm going to be rewarded for it. And through my problems that I'm coming through right now, I'm going to see people saved. I'm going to see people discipled. I'm going to see people set free because I'm going to use this thing, Satan, against you. I'm going to turn it into a testimony and show what people can have if they'll just keep their trust in Jesus Christ. Good stuff. See you next time. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. Join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. If you would like to contact Bob Yandian Ministries, visit bobyandian.com and click on Contact. To contact us by mail, use the address on your screen. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.